to what is going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, but not because of how, uh, because I have great wisdom, greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. Your majesty looked, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace, but the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. So be it. Did it do so be it okay? So I can't plan these things, but if you read your devotion for today, I'm going to talk exactly about this again in the, in the sermon. Let me pull this up here, and then I'll start us with prayer. Today's devotion was from Psalm 119, 161 to 68. Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and detest falsehoods, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. The psalmist trembles at God's word. He is fiercely devoted to the scripture because he rightly identifies the word so closely with its author. If God is the source of life, then his word will give life. If God is wholly truthful, then the word cannot err. And if God is glorious, the Bible is a treasure. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. Spoil is what soldiers received after a hard-fought battle. To learn and digest the word of God requires a fight. He must fight our busy schedules, our distracted minds, our stubborn hearts, and the world's opinion and disdain. But if we win, the result is pure gold. And that's where we're at in Revelation, looking at that battle and the outcome that we know is, is for certain that the Lamb is victorious. So if you'll bow your heads with me in prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you. We thank you, Lord, that we do have a place to come into out of the cold, Lord, even when the heat's not working. Lord, we thank you for this body that is as brothers and sisters who believe in Jesus Christ, who have put their faith and trust in him, Lord. May we do that even more. Will you increase our faith, Father? Will you fill us with your spirit as we study your word, as we study revelation, and as we read and, and train for godliness, Lord, the more that we put into it, Lord, fill us with your spirit and make us more like Christ. We thank you and praise you for all the things that you're doing and that we know for certain what the outcome is, that the Lamb was victorious and that Jesus Christ will reign forever and ever and we will spend eternity with him. We thank you and praise you in his name. Amen. Okay, so you should have read Revelation chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I think. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm counting my hands. I think that's right. And I've entitled this, Fire is calling your name. You might think that's strange, but there is a fire calling your name. You'll understand that from Revelation. There is either a fire that will refine you as pure gold, or a
again, we know the ending of the story. The child is victorious. The lamb was slain so that one day the lion will roar. I'm using a lot of imagery so you see what's, what's here in the Scripture. And again, you can study, study, study all you want to, or you can just take it with simplicity that Jesus is saying, persevere, hold on, I'm coming. Keep your faith firm in me. So if we go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, and I'm reading from the Berrien Study Bible, here is a call for the perseverance or endurance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So we've, we've progressed from a call for endurance to a call for wisdom to a call for endurance again and keeping the commandments. Because if we don't continue to pray, if we don't continue to trust and ask Jesus to increase our faith, and when times do get hard and we have to go through a tribulation period, will we stand firm or will we walk away? This is exactly what John is writing to these churches who have either faced the destruction of Jerusalem already or who haven't, but will be terribly persecuted in the next couple to few centuries. They will be killed by the sword. They will be put into captivity. They will be crucified. They will be burnt alive because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God, we have the freedom to proclaim His name. Are you proclaiming it? There is a call to persevere, to be wise, to understand the way, to endure, to keep the commands, to keep the faith, and to therefore live. This is your call. Going back to Matthew chapter 24 for a review, the disciples asked Jesus two questions because of what He says. He says that every stone is going to be overturned in the temple. And they ask Him, when will this happen? And what will the sign of the coming of the Son of Man be when Jesus Christ will return? And He answers those questions. He answers them specifically, but it's intertwined with a lot of imagery that we don't necessarily understand, but hindsight they say it's crystal clear, right? It's like 2020 vision that we can see that a lot of this pointed to the destruction in A.D. 70 when the, um, the temple was destroyed. But here's what it says in Matthew 24, 30. Then, after these things that happened with the temple destruction, will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn. The number of man will mourn. Those who are incomplete, those who have not been made perfect yet because they've not trusted in the one, Jesus Christ. They will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory because then it's too late. And He will send His angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather His elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. As we read through Revelations, we see this time and time again that there are angels, messengers coming to earth to announce God's judgment. There's, but there's still time to repent. And there's this trumpet sound, this call that we take as a call to victory, but others take it as a call if you're on the other end of that trumpet as the battle's coming. And I will tremble in my boots or whatever you want to say because Jesus Christ will come and He will bring judgment and He will bring reward. And each time that those trumpets sound that we've seen so far, there is a call for mankind to repent. But of course, the further you get down the, that road, the harder it is to let go of those idols, the harder it is to repent. So today is the day of the Lord's salvation. Whether you're saved already or you're not saved, what in your life do you need to change to get closer to God? What is an idol in your life? What... Things are entangling you or keeping you from giving God everything. Jesus summed it up, all the scriptures of the Old Testament, in love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Are you living by that? Are you living by the Great Commission? Are you spreading the gospel message? And then when a... a Conversion happens, are you spending the time to train them up? And that's something that I think the church falls very short of is disciple training. Because we get so many times that we rejoice because they're saved, but then we don't spend the time training them up so that when the fires do come, they walk away instead of being purified by them. 
because they think, why is this happening to me? In Matthew 24, verse 36, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven. So as they're bringing about these judgments, they still probably do not understand everything in God's plan whatsoever, and we may never understand everything. But we know that His ways are perfect and pure and holy, and that His love and His justice and His mercy and His grace are all evenly distributed. And we should praise Him and thank Him for that. But it says clearly here that no one knows, so why do you try to figure out exactly how the end times are going to be? <laughs> if they're going to be bad and you're going to be thrown in jail, guess what? You're going to be thrown in jail. If you're going to be killed for the testimony of Jesus Christ, then guess what? You're going to be killed. But as long as you have Jesus' name written on you, then you are complete, you are made perfect, you are whole. You will spend an eternity with God, and nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Mark chapter 13 also records those events that are recorded in Matthew 24. And constantly you'll see some references in there that you can take back into the Old Testament, specifically to the book of Daniel. So, yeah, that's why I chose Scripture from that, and we're going to look at that a little bit more. But I want to remind you again how the, the revelation of Jesus, not of John, started out. In Revelation 1, verse 4, John, to the six churches? No, seven churches. Seven again. To the seven churches in the province of Asia. Real churches in that day facing real tribulation. One was even mentioned that they would face and be uh, spared this great tribulation. To the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you. That can only come from God. To you from Him who is and who was and who is to come. This, I, I just can't fathom how anything can ever be against me if God is for me because He is the one who is, who was, and is to come. Nothing can separate me from His love, and from the seven spirits before His throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn, firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, even though things look bad, even though I might be persecuted. To Him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by His blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests, to serve His serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So are we, as a people, as a children, as a church, as a kingdom, as royal priests, a priesthood, are we serving God our Father? Are we serving our own desires? And then there's the amen because we're supposed to be in agreement that we're living and serving God because of this great salvation that He's done. Then look, verse 7, He is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see Him, even those who pierced Him, and all the people on the earth will mourn because of Him. So shall it be. Amen. The book of Revelation is summed up right there again. No matter how bad it gets, look. The same way that Jesus ascended into heaven, He will return. And in the meantime, you're to proclaim the gospel message, to live a set-apart life, to give thanks to God, to worship Him, to train up your children so they won't depart from Him, no matter what fires you face. Because they'll either burn you up or they'll refine you, and the fire is calling your name. The Son of Man, number six, plus Jesus, number one, then me as a child of God can be made forever perfect. So I need to persevere. I need to be wise. I need to understand the way to endure, to keep the commandments, to keep the faith, to live as a priest and a kingdom alongside each one of you because we run this race together. And we don't want anyone to stumble or fall behind. One day, and guess what? It's one day sooner than yesterday, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus Christ will come and everyone will see Him. And those that continue in the ways of man will mourn forever. 
But those who have fixed their eyes on Jesus will rejoice forevermore. Wisdom should be given here in your thought of how you live your life before the end, that day comes and sneaks up upon you like a thief. Yeah, I'm giving references to Bible verses all over if you don't get it. Study, train up for godliness. Put this together. Know that how much you're loved and how great this salvation is so you don't miss living a life of worth so that you do hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. To mankind, it sure looks like the dragon, the beast of the sea, the beast of the earth will be victorious. And when you think in simplicity again, because you understand these, you know that they're dealing with kings and kingdoms. You've got to figure that much out already, but you don't have to figure out which king, and like I said, which ruler of which king, and which one has a physical mark on his, on his head or anything else. But the beast of the sea would simply be, how do we get most of our commerce? We still get it today via sea. The things that we worship, the idols that we worship, all these things... Because it tells us that they'll mourn because no one will buy their products again. And the beast of the earth, the governments, the, 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 the systems that are in place, who knows? That's a simple enough explanation. The ways of mankind, living for kings and kingdoms of this world and living for the things, the created things of this world, rather than the king of kings and lord of lords. How are you living your life? Do you believe have you accepted the one? Have you put your faith and trust in the one? Will you follow the one? Or will you stay stuck in the ways of man? Six, 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 and be burned up by the fire. Have you calculated the cost? Simple math, six plus one. If most children can get that. I guarantee you Kira will know 6 plus 1 equals 7. She won't understand other than that. But if I tell her how she, ask her how she's saved, she'll say because of Jesus. And she longs to come to church, and the others do too, even at their age. Because it's inside of them that they're incomplete without knowing God through Jesus Christ. So we've got to train them up. We've got to live a life that's holy and set apart. So Revelation 13, verse 9, again, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with a sword, with a sword he must be slain. Here is a call for endurance or perseverance and faith, because I can never do it, of the saints, the holy ones, the ones set apart. And then in verse 18, here is a call for wisdom then. Let the one who has insight calculate the number of the beast, the things of this earth. For it is the number of man, which we know is six. Six, six. And then in chapter 14, verses 12 and 13, here is a call for perseverance again or endurance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So when you read chapter 14, you saw another number, 144,000. Whatever that number means. Okay? But what we do know is those are the ones who have kept themselves pure. Pure as a virgin, waiting her day, her wedding day, that beautiful day that she has longed for, for so long. The day that nothing else matters but that wedding day. Nothing else matters but the day that you'll meet Jesus face to face. So you have to live your life pure, set aside for that day. <clears throat> they follow the Lamb, the Scripture says, wherever He goes. Not some places, not most places. Wherever the Lamb goes, the Lamb, the one who looks inferior, the one who is slain, was slain for our sins, the one who will forever reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. If we die with Him, we will be raised to life with Him. P plain and simple. And we will be the first fruits because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Remember, there were seven churches again. I'm going to tell you what those seven churches said so you understand what Jesus wrote to them so they wouldn't be caught off guard on this wedding day. Ephesus, return to your first love. Have that passion of your first love so that you stay pure. The one who does will be victorious. Smyrna, remain faithful. Pergamum, 
Stay loyal and do not deny Jesus. Thyatira, have love, faith, service, patience, and endurance. Sardis, wake up and make sure you keep yourselves white. Philadelphia, keep obeying the commands, especially the commands to love God and to love others. And Laodicea, if you haven't figured it out yet, if you stay lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. So buy from him gold, which is refined by the fire, white garments, which can only come from the one Jesus Christ, and eye salve so that you can put in your eyes and see also because you were blind so that you will hear the words of God and you will obey them and persevere to the end. And then at the end of Laodicea, we have this message, which is misquoted Bible verse because it's to the seven churches who are already saved. Here I am at the door asking you to let me back in your heart so that you're not caught off guard that day because I am coming and I want to be forever with you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Man, it will be worth anything we can face on this earth, but we've got to persevere. We have to keep up our faith. We have to keep ourselves pure and obey the commands of God. Oh, Christian, don't just profess Him with your lips and have your heart far from Him. You have a job to do. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Back to Revelation chapter 14. One angel after another appears. Verse 6. Then I saw an angel flying in the midair, and he had what? The eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on earth. Our primary objective as Christians to proclaim God's news. To every nation, tribe, language, and people, he said in a loud voice, Fear God, give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who, has, who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receive its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of His wrath. They will be tormented, tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or anyone who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of God's people who keep His commands and remain faithful to Jesus. So how do you calculate the number of man? Are you proclaiming the gospel message? Do you realize that Babylon the great, the kingdoms of this world, the, the trade, the things of this world, the idols that we have have fallen? They don't have any power over you. So are you living and serving, and for, serving them and worshiping them? Or do you realize that this has already taken place? You are already seated in heavenly realms now. You are a child of God now. You are being transformed now. You are sanctified now and will continue to be sanctified. You are justified now. Or do you have to wait to see where this all happened? This, Babylon hasn't fallen at this point, but the angel declares that they have, but we haven't seen the reality of it. And he warns again that you cannot be a part of the ways of man. You have to come out from them. Even though it looks like this beast, these two beasts and this devil surely are going to devour this little child. Proclaim the gospel. Give God the glory, number one. Number two, because the end is near and Babylon has already fallen. And three, do not follow the ways of man, even if it requires you to not be able to buy food or cost imprisonment or cost you your life. The fire is calling your name. Will it refine you or destroy you? Are you listening to what the Spirit is saying? Chapter 15, the end is coming. 
And John sees, verse 2, I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with the fire, standing beside the seas, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and on, over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. There is a time when workers will rest, and that's when the harvest comes. There was a time when God's children came out of Egypt. They the, saw the mighty miracles of God, even though the Pharaoh's magicians did pretty awesome miracles too. And they were set free so that they could worship God. But the problem is, is they continued to be stiff-necked, weren't they? Learn from those examples. Here's a new song of the servant Moses and of the Lamb, the one who laid down his life for you, the one who said, I will never forsake you, but I will ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit so, you'll be, so he'll be forever with you, and he will guide you into all truth, and he will comfort you. The chapter ends in verse 8 with the fact that no one could enter the temple until this is over, till God's judgment is over. Our job is to proclaim and live, to have eyes that see and ears that hear, to work until the harvest comes and then enter into His rest. Chapter 16. So how can I best explain this chapter? Hmm. There will come a time when you cannot repent. Pretty good explanation of it right there. So do it now before time runs out. Verse 15 of Revelation 16. Look, I come as a thief. Everything that you think you have as a man in the ways of man will be robbed and taken from you and there will be mourning. So get rid of that thought process. I beg you by the mercies of God to be transformed by the renewing of your mind because you've taken yourself and set your part self away from the world. Noah was a preacher of righteousness who built that ark to save his family out of holy fear. He condemned the world and him and his family entered into the ark. Look, I come as a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go, to go naked and to be shamely exposed. As who one who thought they were, as a hypocrite, as a Pharisee, as a fake, whatever words you want to put in there. Then they gathered the kings together to the place in Hebrew called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and out of the temple called a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes and lightning, rumbles, pearl, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it had ever occurred since mankind has been on earth, so tremendous was that quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the, full, the cup filled with the wine of the fury of His wrath. You know, all these end-of-time stories and everything, they... Uh, talk about this battle and this great epic battle it can be read scripture again here's what it's going to be Whew, it's done God's going to breathe just like he breathed in creation and he's going to breathe again the, the power billions and billions of stars and billions and billions of galaxies that follow his command but do we or do we bow down to other things because we think that we need them because we think that they can give us more than God can give us? I don't know. Chapter 17, that prostitute, the one who, the ones who are unfaithful commit adultery with her. What will happen to them? Because they committed atrocities against their groom, against the lamb against their king because they didn't love him as much as they loved the things, the ways of man. Revelation 17 verse 9, this calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are the hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. 
All right, we want to spend hours going over this or understand again that this is the ways of man. This is kings and kingdoms, but we follow another king, the king of king and the Lord of lords. Verse 14, they will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them because He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And with Him will be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. I don't know about you, but that's where I plan to be. I don't have any problem forsaking this world, but it does require a daily denying myself, taking up my cross and following after Jesus so that I do not deviate from the path that I don't fall into those things that entangle me or keep me captive. Chapter 18, you ready? Boom! Crash! Babylon has fallen. The ways of man. There is a cleansing by fire and a destruction by fire. Verse 3 and 4, For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth. That's why I said before, the kings of the earth could be the beasts of the land, and the merchants of the earth could be the beasts of the sea. Grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Mmm, that sure does sound like today when what's going on, doesn't it? And all because of COVID, right? No, <laughs> just kidding. All because it's in God's plan. He can use something like COVID just like he can use Pharaoh, just like he can use a man named Judas, just like he can use you and I to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Here wisdom is needed to calculate the number, not the number number, but the ways of man so we don't follow in those ways. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. There's what I need to calculate so that you will not share in her sin, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. And then in verse 8, Therefore in one day her plagues will overtake, overtake her, death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. In one day destruction will come. And in one day salvation and reward will come. Who are you trusting in? The book of Daniel will give us some insight into this. So I want to go there. I'm not going to quote any scripture. I'm just going to tell you what the book of Daniel is, basically. You know it, right? There's a story about a king. His name is Nebuchadnezzar. He's the king of Babylon the Great. And he thinks he's somebody, and God lets him know that he's not somebody. Daniel even tells him, he says, the only reason you, you, who, are, who you are and the power you have and the wisdom you have and everything is because God gave it to you. So either glorify him or don't. And you know the dreams and the prophecies and all this, but we don't need to know and understand all those to know the story. Nebuchadnezzar ate grass like a wild animal, didn't he? Because he didn't give God glory. The story starts out with three guys that, you know, they lost their names and their identity, kind of, because they were taken from Jerusalem or from Israel and captive, captive in this kingdom of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar even took things from the temple and brought them back. And Daniel, we know by his Hebrew name, which means, well, if we break it down, it means judge and God. <laughs> God is judge. Daniel warns him that God's judge whatever it is, we know Daniel's name. The other guys, we don't know by their Jewish names or Hebrew names. We know them by their Babylonian names. Right? Because their identity was kind of lost, but their story's not lost, is it? Let's see, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Benny. If you've done Veggie Tales, it's Benny, because everybody struggles at Abednego. <laughs> that's their names in the world but we know their story don't we they didn't lose their identity they said we will not bow down even if you throw us to the flames we will not bow down if our God saves us great if he doesn't great we will serve God the God you already know Nebuchadnezzar 
You know all this. But will you serve Him? We will not bow down to the number of man. We will bow to the one true God. And He heated up those flames hotter than any other flames when the guys threw them into the flames. They burn up. But there was one when He looked walking with them in the flames. The one who would make them complete. The one that they put their faith and trust in, they would walk out of the flames, not have a singe mark on them, and not even smell of smoke. Isn't that what the book of Daniel tells us? Do you need to figure out all the prophecies and everything else, or do you need to understand that that is the story? And there's more to the story, too, because there's a lion thing, too, you know, right? <laughs> and one walking with him in the lion's den. So what are you going to do with this? Are you going to hear and obey it? Are you going to let the Spirit reveal to you Jesus in the Word? To transform you? To increase your faith so that it will increase your endurance? So that no matter what happens and if you are held captive or if you are slain, that you won't deny the name of the one who will give you eternal life. <clears throat> you can lose everything, your name, your identity, and be thrown into the fire. But you can never, ever, ever lose your salvation. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Hear this, my churches. I'm going back to Revelation chapter 1. Return to your first love. Remain faithful. Keep remaining loyal and do not deny me. Continue in love, faith, service, patience, endurance. Wake up from your slumber and be as pure as white virgins. Keep obeying my commands, especially to love God and to love others. Oh, and yeah, if you stay lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. These letters to these seven churches so that they will be complete, so that they can be refined by the fire rather than to be destroyed by the fire. Because there will come a day that will take you by a thief or the day that you will long for and you will see the King of kings and the Lord of lords come and gather you in. Just like Jesus wanted to gather Jerusalem in and He wept over them. After this I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah. That's a preview into chapter 19 if you haven't, didn't understand that. Hallelujah, because the day of salvation has come. The day when Jesus will wipe every tear, there will be no more death, and we will spend forever with Him. So the thing is, are you shouting hallelujah now while you can in the physical presence in this world of mankind who trusts in everything other than God? And if you don't think that's the way it is now, we are departing further and further and further. We used to live in a country that at least... It was acceptable to say one nation under God, in God we trust, whether that was just with a lip service or not. But now you, we live in a country where you don't even want to say that. And it's probably going to get worse. Will you sing hallelujah? Will you stand up for Him? Will you set yourself apart from the ways of man now before the end comes? Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for your word. We thank you for this revelation of Jesus Christ that comes through John to the churches, to our church, Lord. May we be a light to this world. And Lord, we pray that as we read your word, as we hunger and thirst for it, as we train for godliness, that you will give us the nourishment that we need, that you will increase our faith, that you will give us the words to say, even if in prison, Lord, that the Spirit of God will run through us, that you will, that you will transform us into the likeness of image of Jesus until we meet Him face to face. 
And we pray this in His name. Amen.